As requested, let's take a look at part-time jobs today. You might think it's the same everywhere, but in Germany it's very strictly regulated. Part-time jobs are not a modern development to begin with, as part-time jobs already existed in the past. In the villages and blacksmiths couldn't make a living from blacksmithing and there weren't enough births for a midwife, so the people concerned did this as a sideline and otherwise had their own fields and gardens to make a living. Similarly, in the later publishing industry, everyone did something in the household, whether it was cutting willows and weaving beating carpets or baskets, or shearing sheep, spinning wool and weaving fabrics. Smokers and Christmas pyramids were carved in the Erzgebirge and cuckoo clocks in the Black Forest. In fact, some of this is now more of a self-employed trade than a part-time job. Anyone who paints their own pictures or makes jewelry and sells it on the internet or at a market stall has a trade. In cities the relationship was reversed in the 19th and 20th century. Whereas people used to be farmers and did something else on the side, many people from the countryside now came to the cities, worked in factories or households and had their own gardens on the side. As soon as I have made a video about allotment gardens, Schrebergärten, I will link it here. Let us now turn to the current situation in Germany. Around 31% of Germans over the age of 15 have a part-time job. Women are considerably more likely to work part-time than men. One of the reasons for this is still based on the old role models. For example, 67% of all mothers work part-time but only 9% of fathers. A quarter work part-time while training or studying. The part-time rate is relatively constant across all age groups. Part-time is basically anything that is not full-time and full-time is 35 to 42 hours a week depending on the sector often around 40 hours a week. But regardless of whether someone works 30 or just 3 hours a week they are all part-time so it also works well alongside a degree course. But even in a normal employment relationship, the legislator had created the possibility for full-time employees to apply for part-time work and for the employer to reach an agreement with the employee on a reduction in working hours. Conversely, part-time employees must be given preference over applicants from outside the company when filling full-time positions. More on this can be found in the Part-Time and Fixed-Term Employment Act, link is in the description. But what types of part-time work are there? We can distinguish between four types. The mini-job, the short-term job, the midi-job and other part-time jobs. These jobs differ in terms of tax and insurance obligations among other things. The classic mini-job is a small job where you are currently allowed to earn 538 euros per month in October 2024. The calculation of the limit is minimum wage of now 12.41 euro multiplied with 130 divided by 3 and rounded up to the full euro, what is 538 from January 2025, the limit will be 12.81 euro times 130 divided by 3 and rounded up to 556 euro. Anyone who earned this amount in a maximum of 43 hours per month may pay a small amount into their own pension account but otherwise earn the money gross for net because the employer usually pays a 2% flat rate tax. You therefore pay no tax on the amount and no further social security contributions. Apart from a small contribution to the pension insurance, you are not covered by health or unemployment insurance for these jobs. This job is therefore a good extra income, but you need other health insurance as this is compulsory in Germany. However, this can still be family insurance through a spouse or parents 
who are subject to social students' contributions. What is the situation with short-term employment? Short-term employment is employment that lasts as a maximum of three months or 70 working days a calendar year and is not intended to be repeated. As this contract is therefore a fixed term, it must be in writing. This could, for example, be an employment contract that is only valid for one year in which the person is employed up to 70 times a year to support the ice cream parlor, the goods receiving department or whatever. For students, there are often offers from large production companies that let numerous employees go on summer vacation and hire temporary production workers on a short-term basis. If these limits of three months or 70 working days in a year are not exceeded, the pay is also exempt from social security contributions. However, taxes must be paid. This regulation applies to the employee, so anyone who has this type of employment with two employers in one year during the summer and winter vacations can have both short-term jobs. However, anyone who exceeds the limit in all these types of employment automatically becomes liable for insurance, which of course also applies to the employer's contribution. In order for this employment to be exempt from insurance at all, you must have another main job. There is a decision aid here as to whether it is an insurance-free short-term job or a main job that is then subject to social insurance contributions. For example, an au pair could also work as an insurance-free short-term job in addition to being an au pair or a school leaver between school and university. If you are unemployed, you cannot do this as this would be your main occupation. If you want to look into this for your situation, you should take a closer look at the decision aid table. Of course, the sheet is in German. Have I already mentioned how important knowledge of German is in Germany? These were the two options for employment that is exempt from social security contribution and partially tax-free. But what if I earn 450 per month this year? If I earn more than the mini-job limit in my contract and planned employment, the legislator thought it would be unfair to bear the entire burden of social security for five euro more and earn less in practice. We are then in the midi-job area. The midi-job lies between the low income threshold of employee and employer pays a normal social security contribution together, but the employer's share is much higher at the beginning and then adjusts to the principle of half and half up to the limit of 2000 euro. You can calculate this for yourself in the midi job calculator. The link is in the description. Here is the result for a midi job with monthly salary of 1000 euro. You can see that the contributions paid by the employer are almost twice as high as the employee's share. In total, however, the insurance companies receive the normal share. This job is therefore subject to social security contributions and you have full protection of statutory health insurance, including your family, if applicable. Of course, if you take this alone, you won't get much for the statutory pension insurance, but it would be enough to take on a mini job on the side. All other jobs that bring in more than 2000 euro per month in gross salary are then normal part-time jobs. There are no special tax or social insurance requirements here. Part-time employees are also to be treated equally. For example, the right to vote for the Works Council or the right to vacation is not tied to full-time or part-time work. Part-time employees are also entitled to the special payment that all employees receive. If, for example, everyone receives a Christmas bonus amounting to half of month's pay, this also applies to a temporary employee on a mini-job basis who only receive 500 euro a month. 
then this employee is entitled of 250 euro. This also fits because 12 times 538 is 6456 euro per year and 12 times 500 plus 250 is 6250 euro and therefore still below the marginal earnings threshold. Disputes often involve overtime bonuses because until 2003 the court had ruled that collectively agreed overtime bonuses that applied for the 41st hour for example were only payable from the 41st hour for part-time employees. Of course a part-time employee would have already worked a lot overtime by then without receiving the bonus. In 2018 the Berlin-Brandenburg Regional Labour Court and the Federal Labour Court clarified at a different view. If overtime bonus apply to the company, they also apply to part-time employees to the same extent. If, for example, the first five hours of overtime per week are paid at a 25% premium and all further hours at 50%, then this also apply to the first five hours of overtime in relation to the part-time contract. And there's also a vacation entitlement, possibly pro rata, as I've already shown in this video. It's a bit more complicated with contracts that don't stipulate any hour or fixed day per week, but that doesn't change the basic entitlement. Only the calculation is a little more difficult. Irrespective of this, however, at least the weekly working hours or, in case of work on call, the minimum working hours must be specified in the contract. And even if employment contract can be concluded verbally, it is advisable to have a written employment contract. Am I allowed to work part-time alongside my main job? I'm not allowed to do that when I'm on vacation, which is for recreation, so I'm not allowed to work for someone else. I'm allowed to work on my own house, but not for another company. My main employer is not allowed to deny me side jobs generally, but he is allowed to prohibit me from working for a competitor on the side. So if you work for IT at Lidl, you can be prohibited from working for the IT of Aldi as a mini job. The limit for working hours may not be exceeded either. If you already work 40 hours a week, you may not work more than 8 hours a week in a part-time job, otherwise you will exceed the legal limit of 48 hours on 6 days a week. And I have to notify my employer of the secondary employment if it has either been contractually agreed or if the employer has a legitimate interest in finding out about it, such as if I work for a competitor or if it affects the calculation of my salary, because with two mini jobs together I'm not allowed to exceed 438 euro per month. If our IT employee at Lidl is doing a mini job at the family run grocery store at the checkout, that's hardly competition. So if you want to earn real money, you could for example do it in such a way that our employee has a 30 hour part-time contract with a hairdresser, subject to social security contributions and on a tax card. Our employee traditionally works six hours a day from Tuesday to Saturday. As part of a short-time activity, our employee works eight hours every Monday, a maximum of 25 times a year, in the incoming goods department of a wholesaler. In addition, the example employee has a mini job in a private household and takes care of family's laundry and dinner for 10 hours, five days a week. The main job is a hairdressing saloon provides us with insurance cover and the main work. We have 30 working hours here. On these days a person also works in a mini job for 10 hours a week which is exempt from social security contribution and tax at a flat rate by the employer. 
on the sixth day of the week, the employee has a short term job for a maximum of 25 days a year. This activity must be taxed, but with income tax class six, it is exempt from social security contributions. When it comes to vacation, our employee has to make arrangement with all employers. However, all three jobs require at least four weeks paid vacation per year. We can continue to work in the hairdressing saloon and in the private household for an unlimited period. We will just have to look for another job for Monday next year. Of course, in all cases, I have the right to take up employment in Germany. You might want to take a look at this video to see what types of visas are available in Germany. If you also have a wish as to which topic I should take a closer look at, just let me know in the comments. Thank you for your attention. I'll see you in the next video.